Greetings, everyone. So glad you could join us for these three good minutes of encouragement that Pastor Dick and I are offering on Wednesdays. Today, I want to talk about heavenly banquets or heavenly feasts, a concept referenced frequently in Matthew's Gospel, but also at least 20 other times throughout our Bibles. And I do so because there are so many who do not get to feast on such banquets in life. You've seen this gross disparity highlighted recently in the racism that's again been brought to our attention so acutely in the recent events of our country. It is the Christians call to participate in making the kingdom of heaven available in the here and now for everyone. Matthew 22, two says, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. Now I imagine that a king would throw an elaborate and lavish feast for his son on his son's wedding day. Maybe that king would put a lot of thought into that banquet table, kind of like I do when company comes. Preparing a dinner for company, I admit, gives me a great deal of joy. First, I cover my table with the Belgian lace I bought in Bruges. Then I take out my best china from my china cabinet. I set out my wedding crystal, water goblets, wine glasses, and sometimes even champagne flutes. I cut fresh flowers from my yard and I arrange them into beautiful bouquets. I select music that will set a mood. I make my best recipes, maybe beef burgundy or coquille Saint-Jacques. I make fresh crusty homemade bread and maybe an apricot tart for dessert. Am I making you hungry? Years ago, I regularly went with a local church group, much as our folks do here when they serve a meal down at UMOM, the United Methodist Outreach Mission. But I went to the St. Vincent de Paul Society and I helped to serve a monthly meal with my church. On several occasions, I took my then young daughter along so that she could participate. One evening there was quite a kerfluffle. After an apparent misunderstanding, one man was told to get back in line and wait his turn for the food. He got angry and he threw the tray with the plate and the glass and the cutlery that he was holding way up into the air. Then in one shattering moment, everything came clattering and splintering down around him. He screamed obscenities and stormed out the door. A lot of people, fellow eaters and staff, were indignant and judgmental even, and muttered things about him being ungrateful. Well, you, you can imagine. That was my initial response. But my daughter said something quite profound in the aftermath. You know, Mommy, maybe he was just upset. Look at this place. It's ugly. The walls are scuffed and gray. There is nothing pretty here. The food is plain. There is no lace on the table or nice dishes like you have. What an awful life he must have, always having to wait in line to eat. The supper of hot dogs and beans wasn't anything like what a king would provide as a wedding feast for his son. It wasn't dinner at my house. This meal was adequate, yes, but it wasn't extravagant as God wants for the least of these, for the prodigals who return home, for the ones who are poor. The cup wasn't overflowing. So many have nothing. So many live lives bereft of any beauty or even occasional extravagance. And we wonder why all the anger, the protests, the riots, the frustration, God desires extravagance for all. God will redress this at the culmination of all things. In the meantime, will we provide justice and maybe even some extravagance? Well, let us pray. Extravagantly loving God, by your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world until Christ comes again in final victory, and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. Through Christ we pray, amen.